Nick Kuzar, welcome. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Mark. Good to see you. Yeah. Hey, uh, I reached out to you a few weeks ago, congratulating you on your on your big round recently for OfferUp, and uh, I don't think you could have timed it. Uh, more closely to the ramp of COVID-19. And uh, my first question to you was, how are things going? What is happening to your business? So can you maybe frame a little bit about what you guys do, where you operate, and and what the heck has happened since you took that round? Yeah, so uh, yeah, OfferUp is the largest mobile marketplace in the country, and we're focused on just helping communities to you know buy and sell. Um, we've been installed over 90 million times. So a lot of people in the US uh, use, use OfferUp quite a bit. Um, I, I would like to say that we could have predicted COVID, but we're not that brilliant. So uh, this was clearly a transaction we've been working on for a while. Um, it just so happened to align with uh, kind of this unprecedented time that we're, that we're going through. Um, you know, I feel very fortunate in some ways. And I, you know, I feel for a lot of people that are going through a lot right now and I anticipate that's going to continue to happen especially small merchants I think um, you know people a lot of people are losing their jobs right now so it's just a time where people they need things and with with, with small stores and other places closed down um, they tend to turn to offer up so you know I've talked to a number of CEOs lately that are going through quite a bit and I feel for them um, um, fortunately for us, we've seen uh, a positive upswing. Uh, every every week, we're breaking records. We're seeing more and more engagement than we've ever seen. Um, not surprisingly, we're seeing people buy things like exercise equipment and video games and things that you're going to do when you're you know spending time at home. Um, our shipping business has grown significantly. Um, so you know we we are I'm very pleased that people are turning to offer up right now. Uh, because they're at home, because they have time, and they have needs, and we're able to help you know people to fulfill those things. So, Nick, are people being mindful? I mean, when I think of offer up, and, and I've used the service a couple of times, uh, it usually involves a person-to-person -person exchange. So, what what are you observing? What are you hearing about people being mindful of the situation at hand? Yeah, I think people, you know, our our view as a company is, you know, everyone should listen to what their local um, officials are saying and and really take that to heart. Um, where what we have seen people do more anecdotally is just adapting to kind of this new way of working. So, you know, historically people would meet up, they would exchange cash, they would shake hands and they would exchange goods. Um, you know, what we have seen is more of what I call kind of the porch pickups where, you know, maybe you have an old workout bench and you don't need it anymore. Someone says they're going to come by at five o'clock. You say, great, I'm just going to leave it out front, leave money under the mat for me. Uh, we've seen that a number of times. We've also seen, um, furniture stores and auto dealers, for example, uh, adapting as well, where you can call in now and do everything on the phone. Uh, you'll even have auto dealers, for example, walking through vehicles and showing you with the video. Yeah. Um, here's what it looks like. Um, let's do your financing. They do all that on the phone. And then the auto dealer will, will literally bring the car to your house and, you know, <laughs> wave at you through the window and here's the keys and, and, and take off. So I think people are, are finding creative ways to adapt um, right now. So Nick, talk a little bit about, ha have you had to adapt internally? Obviously, like we're, we're interviewing uh, with each other from each other's homes. And what, how are you adapting as a business? Sounds like business is strong right now. Other than work from home, what, what are the things that you've had to adjust to as a business? Yeah, so in, in the halls of OfferUp, you know, we were, I think we, we paid a lot of attention to this pretty early. Um, you know, I feel fortunate we have a number of investors and one in particular that said, hey, you should really take this seriously. You should have a plan. And, and we um, laid out kind of a three-stage plan. And the third stage was what happens when they close schools? Uh, so, um, you know, that happened fairly quickly. And uh, we basically encouraged, we just said, everyone leave the office. We will, we're all gonna figure out a new way of working together. And it was. An interesting day to we just told everyone take take equipment whatever you need to be productive at home so you can imagine this exodus from the offer up headquarters and employees with monitors under their arms it was an interesting day for sure um and then we you know to be honest i think in the first week or so we were just trying to figure out what was what i mean we didn't really push too much on everyone i think everyone was trying to adapt to this new way of working uh, especially for people that have kids that's pretty challenging to figure out how to, you know, make that work. Um, and then, but ultimately, I think we we started to do more things to pe keep people connected. So 
um, you know, more one-on-one -on -one time uh, with people. We started to do uh, virtual happy hours. So we found it departments every week, like 4.30, 5 o'clock, they'd sit, they'd have a cocktail and they'd just talk about, you know, their week, whatever happened in their day. Um, we also, uh, there's a really cool feature in Slack we just found out about called Donuts. And what you can do is it's like speed dating for your team. So we continue to be hiring and, you know, there's a lot of people coming into the halls of opera, but um, most people have not met each other. So you can go into this tool in Slack and just, you hit a, you know, you hit a button and it automatically connects you with somebody. Mm -hmm. And then it gets on your calendar and then you can do like a quick, you know, 20 minute, you know, get to know each other yeah, uh, cool. kind of a thing. So we've been trying to find ways to build, like, I guess, kind of connective tissue, right? We're not here, but how do we still stay connected? Um, and and um, so far, it seems like most people are still very productive. Um, you know, I think it's, I think the hard part of being home is trying to figure out when do you separate work? Um, when, it is, when is it the end of the day? Um, so we're trying to really help people, especially people with kids, to think about you know, how, do you, how do you strike that, that balance? Right. So Nick, you've been through a number of phases in your career, some phases which are just rip roaring great and other phase phases that are extremely lean. What, how do you give advice to someone who's starting off in the workforce where you know, it's not up and to the right every single quarter? What, what are some of those lessons or stories you share that are invaluable? Yeah, so I, you know, if you think about the last decade, you know, as unprecedented as this time is, the last decade was unprecedented. Um, you had a lot of people come out of school, that were getting jobs because you know we had one of the lowest unemployments you know uh, in, in history and so I think it's important for people that you know that have not gone through that that you it, it changes you like I've I've gone through two of them and I do feel like it it changed my DNA where it it, it taught me that I better enjoy what I do uh, because I don't think there's any job security anywhere um, I think every you know so I think that was very important I think to live. Um, a fairly frugal life was important. I think not living beyond my means because um, you just never know what's going to happen, right? You just never know when the economy changes and how that's going to impact you. Um, and, you know, I've had, especially when in my early 20s, I had no savings. I, I was, I lost my job. Um, I was eating chili out of a can and top ramen. Uh, I was too proud to move, you know, move back in with my dad. Um, and, you know, that was a rough time. So, you know, I think that was, I think the one thing that really taught me was um, perseverance and just realizing that it's not always up and to the right, um, you know, and building resilience and figuring out how do you kind of visualize past those challenges. So I tend to have a long-term mindset every day. I definitely think about where I'm at, like, you know, when I'm 60 years old. And I think when you have a long-term focus and you can visualize on that, um, it just seems, it just, I think it makes challenges like COVID yet while they're, you know, clearly a tense time. Um, I think you can, I can mentally look past them, right? It doesn't seem like it's insurmountable. Right. Nick, do you think resilience can be taught or do you think you have to live it? Yeah, I think you need to live it. I think you need to feel it, right? I can explain these things to people. Until you feel it, until you've eaten chili out of a can and top ramen for months and have had night sweats all night, like I can't just, I can describe that to you. But until you've lived through that, um, you know, I, I think it, it changes you. Yeah, when, when you talk about you know, living frugally and, and really being balanced and, being, and loving what you do, um, does that mean we should, be cons we should act conservatively? Like at what point do you say, no, no, we have to go? Like at what point do you test those boundaries? And do you? Uh, uh, as an individual or as a company? Or? As, as a company. When you, when you make that statement about the frugal approach and, and, and loving what you do, loving what you do is a very personal thing. But in terms of living within your means, at what point do you ladder up and maybe assume more risk? Get, yeah, when do you get uncomfortable? When do you put yourself into that spot? Yeah, I think it like, you know, I think about the business. Like in the early years, my goal was to spend zero money like every dollar. I'm like, let's not get an office. Let's not pay ourselves anything. Let's not get expensive computers. Like, you know, I, I think a lot of times when I think about lean years and companies, I, I always say in the early days, it's not about growing, it's about not dying. And it's, it's, a, it's a different mindset. And so I would hire the first few people and I'd say, look, I can't pay you what I think you deserve to get paid. Um, 
but I will give you uh, equity. I'll give you ownership in what you're building if you believe in what we're doing. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'd ask people um, what they need to live, which is a very different answer than how much do you want to make? Right. Um, and so that's how it was, I think, in the early days. Now, um, especially like with where OfferUp is today, um, you know, I think this is a very important time for our company, especially in America, and I think we can help people. So, you know, with this, you know, this acquisition with new capital, um, you know, we will be prudent for sure, uh, but we're definitely going to lean into opportunities. We are not going to conserve and hold back. Uh, we are going to lean in and invest for the future because I think it's really um, a time where America needs something like Opera. Um, so, and so I think it depends on where you're at as a company, what's happening in the world. And, and we just happen to be in a phase where we're definitely going to be leaning into, um, you know, a handful of areas uh, for the, for the future. Yeah. So Nick, I've been over to your offices before and it's, it's definitely a collaborative workspace. It's hip. I mean, it's, it's a great setting to be working shoulder to shoulder with people. How, how have you, how did you, think about working from home for your team prior to COVID? Has your view on work from home changed? And do you think once we get back to the old normal, if we ever get there, do you think we snap back to the old ways or have you adjusted your view on these things? Uh, that's a great question. I have adjusted my view. Uh, so I would say over the last probably year and a half, one of the more common questions that have come up in almost every town hall has been, can we work remote? Can we have more flexibility in working remote? And I think part of my hesitancy in the last 18 months was um, I just didn't feel we, we were just going through a lot of company changes, a lot of systems, a lot of processes. And I just felt like it wasn't the, the great time to go and, and test those and, and, and test that out. Um, you know, honestly, I think I worried about, you know, productivity where people would be we'd be sitting home watching Ellen all day. Or are we actually, you know, hit <laughs> me contributing? Um, and then COVID happened. And so I think that was the forcing function to really put, put the company to the test to see if, uh, you know, people be effective. Um, and I've been extremely surprised. I mean, I think if anything, people are more working harder. I think they're more dedicated. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I, we're, we're finding ways to understand kind of how are people performing? Are people still delivering? And so I, I definitely, at least so far, um, I'm far more open-minded about, um, you know, um, allowing people to work, I think, uh, remotely. And so, you know, even if we were, go back to work tomorrow, I think I would, I would definitely encourage us to find ways to be creative and, um, and be open to doing that. Is there anything that you've seen from one of your team members that has just been like, wow, that was, you know, the word heroic is often used, maybe overused, but what was just a standout thing that you've seen in the last couple of months someone do? I wouldn't, I know if I call out a particular individual, but I think as a company overall, there's the adaptability and the resilience um, when, when something like this happens, you, ex, you know, I expect like everything to just be chaotic for a while. And in fact, I found like within a week, we just all adapted to some new norm, you know, the whole company really just tried to figure out how do we all, you know, work in a completely different way together. Um, and I think I was just impressed. I think we just, the number of people that were contributing with ideas and we're, I'm reading it all day and I'm doing a lot of one-on-ones with people. And, um, and it's, it's just been great to see how, how people are still very optimistic, especially about our business and passionate. I think about the work, what we're doing, cause they see their friends, their family, people need it like so bad right now. Like I talked to this woman last week that she was going nuts because her, her uh, kids, she, she just, she was having a hard time separating work and her kids. And she wanted to get a trampoline and the trampoline, you know, there's these big trampoline stores. It was closed. So she turned the offer up and, and saved a bunch of money. And now, now, you know, when she needs to get on a conference call, she just sends the kids out into the backyard. So, um, you know, I think that our team sees that we share a lot of stories that we hear all the time. And I think at least for us, that gives, I think people energy and they're optimistic about how we can help, uh, help the country. But at the same time, I think I empathize for, you know, other businesses that just don't have that setup. Well, I think being mindful of others is critical at this time. I think you guys are providing a platform that's allowing people uh, some optionality, some things that, you know, either getting things at a lower price or disposing of things that generate a little bit of cash. So I appreciate what you guys do, Nick. And in terms of, um, you know, the lessons that I take from this discussion, I like the balance of, um, I guess, staying true and being real and, and staying, having, being mindful of being frugal. 
I think that's a really important lesson. And if you can co-mingle this notion of frugality with understanding when to invest and pursue something vigorously, I think that leads to a pretty darn good output. I think what we learned through this time, Nick, we also, we also learn what we really want to invest in, right? Yeah. It, it is this forced stack rank. What do you really want? What do you really need? What can you really afford? And yeah. um, guess what? I think through that, a lot of improvement comes too. It's, it's tough training though, right? It's, uh, I remember the back of this rowing magazine that we, we, we received in high school. And there was an advertisement for a shell company. And the, the quote was, sweet is the pleasure after pain. And it's really hard to taste that sweetness right now because a lot of people are struggling. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to stay vigilant and as positive as we can be um, because, you know, there is no other option. We've got to get through it, right? I just believe there's no walls, right? You can just take them down. You can, you can, you can figure out how to get around those things. Um, but I find it's mostly looking back that you realize, oh, that wasn't that big a deal. But when it's right in front of you, that wall is... Yeah, 100 feet high and you can't figure out how to overcome that but uh okay. i think part of it is time you just need time on earth maybe to figure those things out well next time i introduce you to someone nick i'm gonna go nick who's our long-term optimist sound okay. good that's fair okay man good seeing you you too take Thanks it easy help.